I regret that my youthful view on Freud was not entirely my own. It was influenced by Albert Ellis, whom I had met and studied with in 2003. I meant to revisit Freud's work with a, with a fresh and a more mature perspective. And I think there's something about reaching one's mid-40s that facilitates a deeper understanding and uh, individual insight. So my journey began with Freud's writings, including his autobiography. I read his letters and other related works, such as uh, A Most Dangerous Method by John Kerr. Now, that book focused on Sabina Spielrein, uh, but it also offered insight into the Freudium relationship and its eventual dissolution. Now, I had read a Freud biography by Frank Salovey, uh, and I hadn't read Ernest Jones' three volumes on Freud, which I plan to get my hands on someday. But this book came very highly recommended by Ivan Pavlov's biographer and emeritus professor Daniel Toads about this book. To be clear, this book isn't for everyone. Novices in psychology might find it really, really intimidating. It's not for your casual reader. It's not for every other psychologist or psychiatrist. Just because it's Freud, don't pick it up. Uh, only consider this 800-page publication, and it has notes from unpublished documents and inaccessible letters, if you possess a deep understanding of Freud and uh, a habit of reading, both history and just reading. From the get-go, the author's fondness for Freud is quite apparent. I valued his efforts to present a narrative that provides context to Freud's work, touching upon both its influences and the ones he influenced. Now, Peter Gay, the author, he was the Sterling Professor Emeritus of History at Yale University, where he taught for 24 years. He also, I think, was a teacher at, at Columbia University. Uh, the book offers a snapshot of Freud's life, his writings during very specific periods, and the evolution of his theory. It is segmented into three eras, 1850s to 1902-3-4-5, then from 1905 to 1915, and 1915 up to when he uh, died by euthanasia, so 1939. Uh, it spread over 12 semi-chronological chapters. I really grew to like the man because previously I'd only known what was wrong with him and his theories without reading about him in this way and in this much depth. I was very touched to find out that there was more to him, of course. For instance, his benevolence, his reading and lifestyle habits, his um, consistency, or bourgeois consistency, and the grace with which he faced his cancer and impending death. I did not know that he wished to die by euthanasia or phys physician-assisted dying uh, when his cancer pain became unbearable and he became invalid. This book helped me to also appreciate his contributions to psychology in a new light and to understand the complex and often contradictory nature of his work and people's reaction to his work. Now, to be fair, Freud's case histories remain authoritative models for an age that seems to have forgotten how to write case histories. So my problem with classical Freudian psychoanalysis is what he himself summed up in uh, one of his later 1937 papers as if the patient agrees with us, then we are right. But if he contradicts us, then that is only a sign of his resistance, which again puts us in the right. So in this way, we are always in the right against the helplessly poor individual whom we are analyzing, no matter what attitude he may take towards our imputation. So in short, I think heads I win, tails you lose. Even so, this book put him in the right perspective for me personally, and I do see his greatness.